there's no better feeling than a personal win. And the State Farm Personal Price Plan can help you do just that. Talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. Everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. Mike Fratelloui, and we'll see you in the stores. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. All right, I'm hung up on this 500 level. The, the Twins got to get to 500. Don't was, worry was, about it. But now let me ask you something. Yeah. Was 13 games below 500 the most they've been below 500? This year. This, this year? year, yeah. So now they're back to nine games yes. under 500. But don't worry about 500 this year will not get you close to the wild card because we now have teams that are... Last year they got in with 85. This year you got... It's so top-heavy. It's going to take you 92. So uh, there, there's... Well, the there's, only there's, way they can get in is win the division. Yeah, they'd have to catch Cleveland, and Cleveland's going to win 90 games, so they're not going to... They're, that, if they sweep Kansas City and Tampa, they're still going to be two games below 500. Do you uh, do you realize how cyclical... Well, first of all, Tampa is one of the big surprises in the season. They're over 500 after dumping eight, nine guys, including Odorizzi and Morrison. Mm-hmm. But uh, do you realize... That the Kansas City Royals World Series uh, entries 2014, World Series champs 2015, come to town having lost 27 of their last 31. Isn't that something? Nine in a row, they've lost 27 out of 31. They are last in this miserable division, well behind the White Sox, who are 30 and 60. Well, who did Kansas City get rid of? Everybody? Well, their pitch, yeah, they didn't get rid of everybody, but uh, they they lost enough guys to really hurt, and their pitching's been terrible. They got the worst earn run average in Major League Baseball, and they they don't score. They they have terrible pitching, and they don't score runs. So those are that's a, a bad uh, combination. Bad combo. What's I want to tell you how bad the Baltimore Orioles are, though, in town. By the way, the worst fielding team in Major League Baseball, and they proved it yesterday mm-hmm. by making about five blunders, but. In 1988, the Baltimore Orioles lost the first 21 games of the season. In 1988. Number 19, uh, getting swept here at the Metrodome put them at 21 straight. 0-21 to mm-hmm. start the season. This year, mm-hmm. after 89 games, they are five games worse than the team that lost its 21st 21 of the season. Wow. So I know that's a math deal, but the team that <laughs> lost its first 21 was was 29 and 60, and the this year's team is 24 and 65. Holy the mackerel. Orioles! And you look at the Orioles' history; it's been a pretty uh, pretty impressive history, and it is uh, this is their worst team ever by far. Who's They're going to try to trade everybody. Superstar uh, Mike Davis. Chris Davis Chris is Davis? the guy that they paid a whole collection of money to, and he's hitting about 150. There's a lot of guys between a lot of left-handed power hitters, between the fact that pitchers are throwing too hard, and then they shift and take away hits. Over a, every the left-handers are really getting killed by all these shifts. So he's, but of course he's supposed to hit home runs, and he's he hit two here, but uh, that only put him at nine for the season, and he strikes out. Three times a game. Is this the longest terrible. home stand of the year? I think they've had one other, but there's yeah, I think what they've a had two stretch of weather games. they're getting. Oh, oh it's gosh, been great. It's been Wasn't gorgeous. a gorgeous weekend. I managed to avoid it. I, I seriously considered going yesterday, and then I decided to take a country drive instead. So. Uh, Mickelson cheated again. 
What did we catch him doing well, now? He self-reported this one. Okay. When was this last weekend? No, it was at the Greenbrier yesterday. Okay, I didn't see what happened. He yesterday. self-reported a two-stroke penalty for an infraction on the seventh tee. Mm-hmm. Prior to taking his tee shot, Mickelson deliberately stepped on some grass in front of the tee box to help the expected line that? of his shot. He then discussed the situation with a PGA Tour rules official who confirmed he ran afoul of the rules. Okay, what what did he do? He was knocking it down? He stepped on the grass in front of where he teed the ball up, and that's considered improving your line of flight. Huh? Uh, when you're hitting it off a tee? I guess. I uh, So he was trying to help himself aim? He was trying what? to help the expected line of his shot, and that's a... Uh, it's violation of Rule 13-2. Dash and two. You know what that is? More evidence. Golf mm-hmm. has too many rules. Mm-hmm. I have that. That does not help you. You know, standing might, in front of the tee does not help you. Don't you know what might? What I Unless think? You're a big guy. Given that it was <laughs> yeah, Mickelson, <right>. yeah. <laughs> Give you a little height then. <laughs> right. Given that it was Mickelson, yeah. I bet he did it. To show show everybody what a good scout he is by self-reporting that. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yes. It was not spontaneous is what you're saying. I think he thought, you know what? I'll show him I really follow the rules. I'm a noble guy. I'm going to step on this grass here and then look around for somebody to consult with and Mm -hmm. say, you know what, I think I better charge myself two strokes. Since I'm out of contention anyway, and the only reason I'm here is because the green briar gave me a free place up here, (laughs) and I, I do ads for them right, every right. half hour. Well, he says he lives there. Yeah, he's, got a, he's got a place there. Yeah, Dustin Johnson's got a place there, too. But yeah. they gave... No, wait, he didn't... No, Bubba's got a place there. Oh. That's why he played. But they gave them these places to then be spokesmen for right. the uh, Greenbrier. It does yeah. look like a lovely little oh, area. Oh, it's, it's supposed to be a fantastic resort. You know, we're going to have this week next year. Oh, this is our week, huh? Not a very good field. I hope the field's a little better here. But that's our week. They're moving to the fall oh. because I think this Jim Justice, who happens to also be the governor of West Virginia, mm-hmm. uh, realized that that's probably their busiest weekend for tourist resorters of the summer. He's going to move it to the fall when they're not quite as busy. I okay. Think. So... Kevin and, Na won the tournament. Kevin Na did win the tournament. Uh, and and then spoke Korean to the interviewer. Did he? He said, may I say something in Korea? In really? Korean. And then he thanked, uh, he was born in L.A. or something, wasn't he? I mean, yeah, he's, he's an L.A. kid. Uh, but but he, he thanked all his Korean fans. One of the Korean chicks, by the way, in the, now they had a, a rare 72-hole event for the LPGA. Mm-hmm. 31 under. Oh, God. 31 under, mm-hmm. she shot. 31 yeah. under. <laughs> Let me I ask you. the course might have been a little too easy for him. Uh, Matthew Jr. showed me something this weekend, and I, I don't know when it was from, but it was an LPGA golfer. Uh-huh. And it was a, I think it was a Korean lady. That just, that's why well, I remember. there's a damn good chance it was because they got about 40% of the field. So She whiffed. Really? She went up to the tee, addressed the ball. <laughs> Nothing. I hope her dad wasn't there. Is wow. that a stroke penalty? Yes. Well, it's not a penalty. It's just no, a stroke. No, it's just a stroke. It's, just, it's not a stroke So when penalty. she did hit it, she was lying too. Two. Yeah, her second one. He, she, missed, she swung and missed. But she did what I did. I'm a veteran of that. Uh, well, I, yeah. I, 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 I whip. You walk it off. Yes. You kind of go over here. I and, and just that is the, this out again. That is the true test of ball-beating honesty if you whip and count it. That's true. There's a lot of people attempt to make it look like yeah. that, that was just a really, hey, just that was just a really exuberant <laughs> practice swing. Right. My, I got my you, didn't whips I? are so violent, there's no getting around them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a swing. Yeah, That's when I yeah. turn around and say, I got you guys, didn't yeah, I? I got yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, you go thought for that was a, Now I'm really going to try to hit it. <laughs> <laughs> or as Faraday would say, everything moved on that shot except your balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, man. So it's not yeah. a penalty, it's just a stroke. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a stroke, yeah. Because yes. you've addressed the ball, because we were trying to debate that at home. Well, Is it an additional? To debate. She missed the ball. Do you realize this man was so out of touch for a week? He did not know about my train ride until just now. Oh, I was oh. in here being regaled. <laughs> because <laughs> I was being taunted. 
by the staff as the train ride was taking place because I was on Twitter uh, uh-huh. casting aspersions on myself for being dumb enough to take the train. When you the day you took the train. Did you Thursday. have an intention of going to a game that No, no, day? no. It was going to be a leisurely ride. It turned out leisurely. We were going to yeah. read. The leisureliness really got to me when we were just on the other side of Oconomowoc, not yet to Milwaukee, uh-huh. in the brush, and we stopped <laughs> for 40 minutes to let a freight train come by. That's when, does, the, that's when the leisureliness of it. I'm uh, adding trains to caves. <laughs> yes. I'm not right. going in a cave no and I'm caves. not going on a train. No trains. Why have we stopped? <laughs> I see Pat not being a good waiter at that point. No. No. And then they. I was right near you in O'Connell. Yeah. Well, here's what they tell you that we have to wait for a freight train, yeah. but they never tell you how long it's going to be. They ah. don't want. They don't want unrest. But. You I'm know, sorry, there was 121 people on the train, I heard one of the guys say. 110 of them were Twins fans. Yep. 70 of them were down there drinking, and they didn't care how long it <laughs> took, you know. But uh, How was the air conditioning? Were, oh, that wasn't a problem. Mm-hmm. But uh, What do you mean, how was, was the air conditioning? Day. You think they on got the ice blocks? I'll no, tell you what, I, yeah, I knew we were in trouble when they stopped to have a smoke break. Yeah. Well, they said, you got a smoke break here. And I was just disconsolate that I didn't smoke yep. so I could have something to look <laughs> forward to on this god-awful experience. Now, you didn't see in one of the, the back cars, the cargo area, they weren't transferring any gorillas or anything like that. <laughs> no, they, no, they I didn't okay, see any okay. escape. Okay. But... He told but, me it was so bad he paid seven hundred bucks to fly home. Yes, we, I we, thought he was going to take the mega bus. No, <laughs> no, we flew home. Well, there was no option. It's cheaper than divorce. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's, it's yeah, seven hundred versus what you know, <laughs> yeah, divorce going to cost. Half, half, but you, you know, half, you, 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 know, you shared the, half and nothing. <laughs> you shared the marital sentiment that you both didn't like it. Oh no! Uh, but the uh, the kicker was when we were in Oconomowoc, yeah, waiting. <laughs> After about 20 minutes, I said, hey, honey, we've taken a lot of trips together in these in this long, long relationship. Mm-hmm. What was the worst? What was the worst? I was lighting the mood, and she said, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> then I knew we were flying home. Yes, but what, I, I, what are you... Okay, you're you're but you're sitting there. What drove you crazy that you weren't moving. getting closer to your let's goal? Let's get moving. Yeah, let's go here. Let's move. Plus, half the <laughs> time too- they're going fifteen. The cars are hauling ass right by you. See a sixty one. They're passing you. See a you. little country road out there. They're going to zoom, and you're going fifteen. What are we going fifteen for? Where, where we got you, tracks. When let's you, go. When you headed out, where did you take the left to go into Wisconsin? Uh, we're not Winona, the lacrosse oh, down there. Oh. Yeah, we're a little south of Winona. You go into lacrosse. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That was going to be the glorious part of it. Oh yeah. But the, for the about river for and about fifteen everything. miles, you see the river, and then after that, you see reeds and crappy parts of town because railroad tracks are always in the crappy part of town. Well, they're not they're going not down go Main Street. The best you know right? how they say the other side of the tracks? Yeah. That's where the tracks are. Yeah. The other <laughs> side of the tracks. All right, just a moment. <laughs> about this cave story by the way did you ever see uh burt lancaster is one of the great actors of all time you would agree on that Mm -hmm. right uh his best movie ever was elmer gantry of course but uh ace in the hole did you ever see the movie ace in the hole it's about a guy who's uh caught in a a, my uh Cave, you know, not a cave, but a, 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 a well, mine. A, a mine, yeah. He's caught in a mine, and this guy's down there, and it becomes a national story. And Burt Lancaster is a reporter. I think I have seen that. Who then ends up trying to figure out how to make money on the deal mm-hmm. and basically trying to keep screwing up the rescue operations to keep the guy down there. Because <laughs> he's getting the. the, uh, keep the okay. he's, selling, he's not selling t shirts, but he's <laughs> selling whatever the equivalent of was in the 1950s. Ace in the hole. It's a. Uh, there's actually two names for it. The big, the big something, and then Ace in the hole are the two names. Does the guy it. ever get out? 
I can't remember if he even gets him out or not, but it's a uh, it's a hell of a movie, and he's a uh, he's the shy, he's at his shyster best in that one, Ace in the Hole. So somebody will uh, make a movie. About I do this remember thing. it takes place in somewhere like Arizona. Yeah, or it's out, you know, some yeah. Colorado, Wyoming, some damn place, but out in the middle of nowhere, and he uh, he ends up uh, trying to uh, th- to make a profit off it, and does not come off as a uh, as a uh, noble noble person so Nishek. yeah how you doing today sir uh my question is what is going on with uh why is jerry butler leaving the minnesota timberwolves there's been rumors about him leaving what's going on with that i don't uh, believe him he's not leaving the minnesota timberwolves now he is not going to sign the extension that they've offered him this year because he can only get a meager 109 million this year. Next year he can get 150 or 60. But uh, Jimmy Butler will play here this year. Don't worry about it. So he was gonna he's gonna take the 109 million. What no, you say? he's not going to take the 109 million. He's gonna wait. He's gonna wait to take the 109 million. Okay. No, no. I'm telling you. If what they they have offered him as much as they can offer him this year, it's a hundred and nine. He's going to turn it down, and everybody's going to make a big deal out of it. But next year he can get a hundred and fifty. That's why he's going to turn it down, not because he wants to leave here. Okay, so he's going to get a hundred and fifty. Okay, next year, yes, sir. Next All right, year, okay, okay. This is the place to come for info. Yeah, what check. do you need? Okay, I got yeah. another question. Oh, yeah. wait, just uh, just to, so people don't call anymore. Ace in the hole was Kirk Douglas. Oh, wasn't I? Thought it was Bert Lancaster. Uh, both fine actors, but that's yeah. the oh, reason. Really? For a I always of calls. confuse those two guys. By the way, greatest miracle in America. I saw Bert Lancaster in the role sure. in my mind's eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's yeah. it's it's here. Okay. Aaron got a question. What it. Uh, I always get those guys confused, but Bert Lang- uh, Kirk Douglas still alive, yep. even though he had wow. a terrible stroke, yeah, he had the bad stroke. twenty years ago. Uh, what is the uh, contumely between Jimmy Butler and Carl Anthony Towns? Oh, half of it is uh, made up, probably. I mean, it's the NBA; they they the off season, they run everything. Uh, the latest rumor is the guy in Portland's unhappy, and then he denies it. Uh, Butler would like Carl uh, Anthony to be a little bit of a less of a prima donna, a little more hard nosed. But Carl's uh, Carl's kind of a big personality, talented kid, but not the not, not the grinder of all time. So Jimmy wants him to be more of a bulldog. Jimmy wants him to be more like Jimmy, which mm-hmm. is yeah, nasty. Let's mm-hmm. go get him. Come on, and Towns is more. Yeah, hey, I got a lot of talent here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take advantage of that, but I'm not gonna kill myself, you know. So, and then, but you don't know. The first rumor was Butler can't stand playing with Wiggins, and then it was he can't stand playing with Carl. It's it's just the off season of the NBA. It's 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 a star powered league as far as personalities, and any anybody can go online and throw out anything and then it becomes fact are you as weary as i am of this show that lebron put on i'm going to choose the lakers no Uh, no not this time he he said it right away it was not a big production he did not make a production of it this time the first day he could announce it he announced it and it was over there was no great big pronouncement espn 50 what was in it for him to go to the lakers well, more money. He's got a home. No, not more money, but L.A. He's you know he came back, did his duty in Cleveland, won him a title, and he wants to go somewhere where the sun shines. All right, okay. we'll be back uh, shortly. <laughs> and the rivers don't catch on fire. Right. <laughs> but now, thanks to our great friends in Owatonna, Minnesota, at Federated Insurance, where it's their business to protect your business, and nobody does that better than Federated. It's Bruce Vale from the Wall Street Journal in Your Money Now. All right, I walked in late. Why were you discussing Ace in the Hole? Because of the Thailand cave thing? Yes. Oh, yeah. I saw that movie, I guess, uh, about 15 years ago for the first time. And did you think it was Kirk Douglas or Burt Lancaster? Well, I saw the movie, so I know who it was. (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right, Uh, hit it. Let's just end it there. I was going to go do a bad impression. But stocks rallied to start the week. Investors uh, stayed focused on Friday's jobs report, and uh, that helped. 
pushed the Dow Jones Industrial Average back into positive territory for the year once again. The Dow gained 320 points, closing at 24,776. The Nasdaq Composite rose 67 points. The S&P 500 gained 24. Starbucks has joined the growing list of companies that have or will ban the use of single-use plastic straws. The coffee shop chain said it will replace them with alternative materials or strawless lids by the year 2020. The trend to be more environmentally friendly has been gathering steam in recent months. IKEA and Royal Caribbean have made similar announcements about straws. Airlines have been reducing legroom for passengers on their planes for years, and the FAA isn't going to do anything to stop that. Last year, a federal judge ordered the FAA to address the case of the shrinking airline seat. The agency responded to that order by ruling that seat shrinkage does not affect consumer safety, so it won't be setting limits on legroom or seat width. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. I jumped in late. Shrinkage? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you get that occasionally. Here's Johnny Height. Thanks, Bruce. It's cold in the cabin. <laughs> uh, this traffic, uh, well, there won't be much traffic, but let me tell you, this was sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs. Want to win a rockin' trip from Jersey Mike's and Pepsi? Stop in Jersey Mike's today to enter. No purchase now. <laughs> Here's John Height. Thanks, Joe. Sunny at 89 degrees. Twins and Royals open up a three-game series tonight at Target Field. Newly named All-Star Jose Barrios pitches for the Twins. Lefty Danny Duffy goes Boo, for Kansas City. We want City. Eddie. We want Eddie. <laughs> Eddie's got the same chance to win that election as, uh, I don't know who was, an independent candidate does yeah. to be president. It's, uh, no shot. He's got Stanton. He's got Ben and Tendy, mm-hmm. and he's got uh, who else has he got? He's got he's got very tough competition. Where is the Midsummer Classic this year? Washington D.C. Washington. Where you take your short sleeve shirt for that one? <laughs> Oof, uh, <laughs> a little hot there at this time of year. How many guys you think will drop out though? Eddie will probably get uh, put on that uh, roster. One Eddie, way or do the we other. have any injured outfielders? Nothing though? yet. Not Nothing right. yet. And, uh, you know the uh, what is what what, what the, how many games does Brantley have to miss to yeah. not be an All Star? <laughs> yeah, he yeah. plays about one third of the season, and he he keeps <laughs> ending up making the All Star team all the time. Mm-hmm. Minnesota United added its first player of the summer transfer window today, signing winger Romario Ibarra. A 23-year-old Ecuadorian. Good. Uh, that's a that's a good signing. Now, Joe, good signing, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. when next time you're watching United, yeah. they're going to have two Ibarras. They're going to have Miguel, and then they're going to have Romano. Is Rom- it? Romario. Yeah, Romario. Romario. Don't be confused. So don't, uh, don't get careful. confused. I'll be careful. I think Miguel uh, is uh, might be in the middle, and the other guy plays up front or something <laughs> like that. I'm not sure. Uh, they could do this with target allocation money. A major league soccer fund created to acquire players who earn higher salaries and are expected to be uh, key players on the field. And then they, but they have another higher level, I believe, the designated player, mm-hmm. which they can pay uh, even more money to. I think we only have one of those guys. So. We were wondering if there was a a sports talk allocation fund at all to keep <laughs> some of the main players of sports talk. Yes, yes, a big big pot of money, right? <laughs> Guys pay fines when they bring stuff to drink into the studio because we're not supposed to do <laughs> there you that. Go, yeah. <laughs> uh, news notes from today. A St. Cloud couple died and a family member has been critically injured after a driver turned onto the path of three motorcycles in central Minnesota over the weekend. State Patrol says 42-year-old James Young, 44-year-old Michelle Young were operating two of the bikes, were pronounced dead at the scene of the crash on Highway 23 northeast of Wilmer. The man's father, 61-year-old James Young, was operating another motorcycle and skidded to avoid hitting the car before crashing. He's in critical condition. His 38-year-old daughter, Melissa Mayo, was a passenger on the father's bike, suffered none critical injuries okay johnny what do you mean turned into he was he was make turning a quarter or a quarter three, uh for the way i understood it from the explanations over the weekend uh, it was an intersection type situation the three bikes were coming and the car just made the turn without oh you know yielding yeah. without uh whatever so, huh. and the bikes had to one had to go down and the other because two the car it. driver was an idiot yeah mm-hmm. from the do bike we don't identify the driver nope not yet mm-hmm from the Pioneer Press, days after a St. Paul police dog accidentally bit the wrong person, 
The police chief and mayor said today the canines temporarily will not be used except in specific dangerous situations and there will be an external audit of the canine unit. The incident happened Friday, the third high-profile St. Paul canine bite case in two years. In April, the police department changed its canine policy and restricted when dogs can be used to physically apprehend a suspect, limiting it, uh, limiting it to the most serious cases. Mayor Melvin Carter, in a statement today, said last week's incident involving a St. Paul police canine is very disturbing, especially viewed in the context of other events that have occurred the past two years. I'm working with Chief Axtell to implement a set of temporary restrictions on deployment of police dogs effective immediately until a full audit can be completed. Rook, Rook, you're a veteran of battling with police dogs, right? Uh, Yes, I am. You've done that at the fair, what, two, three times? Uh, and the, yeah, uh, many times. Mm-hmm. I've been there many, many times. times. <laughs> uh, they are very effective. Yes. And even with that zoom suit I had you, on, uh-huh. I, I had bruises on my body mm-hmm. from where they bit me, even mm-hmm. through that suit. Well, don't let uh, don't let uh, Mayor Carter hear about this. Else you won't be able to do that at the fair anymore. We're well, not doing worry. that at the fair anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it costs too much money, right? Is that so Mayor Carter is going to be yeah. saving the, uh, yeah. the city mm-hmm. money left yeah. and right? Yeah, you people came over and caused quite a traffic jam in Minneapolis seeing the fireworks, you, uh, <laughs> so you St. Paulites, damn you. Hey, we saved a hundred grand, man. Let's go. <laughs> then he uses the budget as his, as his excuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just as likely he just damn forgot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, the dog situation uh, that uh, caused all this to happen happened Friday, 1.40 a.m. Police called to a weapons complaint in Dayton's Bluff. Officers found a man who wasn't involved in the incident, uh, but still told him to lay on the ground for his own safety. A short time later, Officer Mark Ross got there with his canine. Ross approached other officers, and within about 10 feet from the man lying on the ground, the dog's collar broke. He ran toward the man and bit the man on the forearm. Ross commanded the canine to stop, but the dog would not stop. He also activated the dog's electronic collar and removed the dog from the man's arm. Uh, Unfortunately, that took about 20 seconds, according to police, when the dog was put back in the squad. Ross apologized to the man and called for paramedics. Mm. I wonder what that's going to cost us. (laughs) I did all this guy will say. He'll he'll accept the apology. There won't be a lawsuit. We might not ever have fireworks again. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. President Trump has decided... 1.40 a.m., Joe. What happens then? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> good happens at 1.40 a.m. 1.40 a.m. You should be in bed You by shouldn't 1:40. even be an innocent bystander at <laughs> no, 1.40 no, a.m. No, no, you should. <laughs> President Trump has decided on his nominee for the Supreme Court, a source with knowledge of the search told Fox News, although the name is still not known. The finalists... He must not have told anybody. Yeah. He must not have. The, the only way to prevent it from leaking is telling the nobody. One, uh, the, it's the gal who caused the most controversy, so that's who he'll pick. Okay, the one who can stir <laughs> the most of it up. Yeah. The if, one that'll have both sides angry? Uh, I don't think she'll have both sides angry. But mm-hmm. The finalists are believed to be four federal judges, Brett Kavanaugh, Raymond <laughs> Kethledge. Kethledge, I, that's who I want. Amy Coney Barrett and no. Thomas Hardiman. Uh, the one guy was recommended to him by his daughter, right? Uh, she yeah. likes him. Uh, we will make she the, heard him speech or speak or something. Mm. Yeah, the announcement tonight, 8 o'clock, and uh, yes, it will be on television if you want to watch that. Can't believe it's not. Legal. I predict I that the Republicans will approve and the Democrats won't. <laughs> I bet you're right. <laughs> I'm going out there and that Yeah, limb. you really are. A Wisconsin prosecutor has decided he won't file charges against three high school students who gave their classmates brownies laced well, the male enhancement supplement. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can tell who ate the brownies, huh? <laughs> Rock County District. Only to give it to the only to the guys or everybody? <laughs> uh, you know, that's a good question. Yeah. It doesn't really address that. It just says classmates through the yes. whole thing. Uh-huh. Rock County District Attorney David O'Leary and Clinton <laughs> Police Chief David Hooker issued a news release today saying three Clinton High School students made the brownies, secretly laced them with the male enhancement herbal supplement. Did it work? Or Zyrexin. Are you happy to see me or just have a brownie? <laughs> What's it called? Zyrexin? Z- Zyrexin. <laughs> and gave it to their classmates as a senior prank back in May. Five students got sick. The pranksters could have been charged. And the other four got dates. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'd never eat a brownie because you can put too much stuff in. Yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah. Where do we get these? Yeah. Yes, right. You can hide anything in there, for God's sakes. The Frankster's could have been charged with a felony, but O'Leary said today they never intended to hurt their classmates. They expressed sincere regret, apologized to the school, the police, and their fellow students, and agreed to cover their sick classmates' medical expenses. Half the TV dramas you see with a murder in it when somebody's poisoned, it was in the brownies. Brownies. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's always in you the brownies. Just can't trust them. Can't resist them sometimes, though. <laughs> no, you, you can put good. anything in a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the main substance right. of a brownie. And, uh, it's just that thick black goo you gotta yeah, whip up. Right. You can drop anything in there. It'll disappear. <laughs> right. Hyatt Hotels is joining the growing count of companies and government entities moving to eliminate plastic straws in favor of ocean-friendlier alternatives. Mm-hmm. Starting in September, hotel visitors at Hyatt's will have to request single-use plastic straw and drink picks, while eco-friendly alternatives will be provided where available. The move by the Chicago-based company, which operates 700 hotels in more than 50 countries, comes as Starbucks announced today that it would get rid of plastic straws from all of its 28,000 locations by 2020. Now, I got a question for you, Johnny. Uh-huh. Saturday, I had a, I was out running around rip, dry, making errands, and I had a craving for a Wendy's burger, right? Okay. Single, Who does it every once in a while? Single cheese, mayonnaise, and onions, right? Okay. Just a single. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I get I get myself a soda with it. Yeah. And with the plastic straw. Uh-huh. Is that going to end? How is that plastic straw going to end up in the ocean? That's We've been what through I this. On the I want to ask, how is that going to end up in the ocean? Wrapped around a turtle it's, or something. It like blows out of the garbage There's truck. a Wendy's out at Ridgedale, and no. it's going to end up in the ocean? I don't buy it. Yeah. I don't buy it. Disposable straws, or, or uh, what do you call them? Biodegradable straws. Yes, they should have. Them. Well, the push here, the why this haul happened, Joe, you had the story. You talked about it. Uh, the whale yeah. off the coast of Thailand that had 17 pounds of plastic bags and other plastic. <laughs> yeah. in well, that's stomach. his problem. Well, well he yeah. died. He's a pig. <laughs> What's he eating so much for? Brownies. Him? Yeah. Right. Brownies. Laced with straws. John, do you have more for us? I do. One lousy whale. <laughs> The child became stuck on a zip line at Gator World over a land of uh, over a pool of gators no. on Saturday. Well, even better, the manager of the zip line said, eh, "Situation's no big deal. It's an everyday occurrence and happens fairly often." <laughs> Caves, it's, it's not trains, a low, it's and not, zip lines. It's not a low. It's not a low riding zip line, is it? Is it it's hanging up there? It's the about air? forty feet above the gators mm-hmm. at the apex, mm-hmm. where at its highest point. So, I mean, would you take the boys out there, Reeves? Would you? Uh, uh, hey, <laughs> after the day I've had, they could go out there by themselves. <laughs> uh, Nick Kahapina, mm-hmm. who is the uh, manager, yeah. he said the man and the child were never in any danger, as yes. the guides at Gatorland are fully trained in that situation <laughs> because. It happens fairly often. Who came up with the idea, let's have a gator pond <laughs> and then have people fly over it. Yeah, zip line. Let's go. Let's go. Who put that together? Uh, what, there's no, what, what could go wrong? Right. You know? <laughs> hey, which, where's this gator land? Because there's like a million of them. Uh, this one? It doesn't have a city. It's in Florida. I'm well, not sure yeah, what city. <laughs> but yeah, aren't those like Super Americas down there, basically? <laughs> right. The pair were about 40 feet above the gators. The officials said they were stuck on the zip line about 20 to 25 minutes, a little longer than normal, according to the manager, because the man was heavy. He's a big guy. Mm-hmm. He's a big guy. Cost hey, sag. big Larry. We're, uh, we're working on it. Those gators' eyes were just yeah, huge. Right, right, right. Licking their chops. <laughs> as, that, as that cable just kept, you know, uh, getting lower and lower. Oh, oh, Rook, snap. who's your buddy uh, on the airplane? Oh, Gary Selberg. <laughs> Gary Selberg would be the he would be the, the head faker to try to the big guy that tries to fake out the old lady. So no, no, please break their daughters in. And Gary Selberg is a big guy. <laughs> Kapia said wind gusts are typically to blame for people becoming stuck, which was happening in this situation, he said. A manager said it usually only takes about 10 minutes to straighten things out. This time, it took almost 25. So (laughs) it's routine. So then how does it become a story? This guy ratted them out? The guy guy took uh, a film with his his Uh phone, uh, took a video of the gators swimming underneath he and his child. What? 
Who likes to go watch them? That's what I mean. Who stops at these places to look at gators? Well, I, then I don't compound get it. that by you not only went there, but you decided to hang a them. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's where I draw the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will go watch a gator feeding maybe uh, somewhere in Florida for the kids, but I'm not flying over them. I, I don't trust them. I don't either. I don't, <laughs> trust, I don't trust gators or no, zip I don't. lines. They're too fast. You know, we didn't get you up on the zip line during the Super Bowl, no, Pat. We no, were. No, I would have went. You and wasn't it you Jim and Marshall? Marshall yeah, go Jim Marshall and I. In California, a suspected drunken driver went back to his burning car Sunday <laughs> to try lighting his cigarette using the flames. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I put there's that in my list. There's, there's, a man, there's, I never a man, this. there's a man with a nicotine addiction right there, man. I don't have a man. He gave me one of these too. deals, too, before you... <laughs> nope, I don't have the lighter. Amy Walker with the California Highway Patrol said 25-year-old Robert Quigley rear-ended an SUV that was stopped in traffic. The HP officer spotted the car after it burst into flames, turned around in traffic to help. A witness told officials a shirtless Quigley, a Quigley oh, yeah, shirtless. went back to the burning car to light a cigarette, singeing part of his eyebrows <laughs> off in the process. Wow. <laughs> Quigley later told the officer at the scene, yeah, I'm not afraid of fire. I deal with this kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> What does he eyebrows are going? What? what is his car routinely start on fire? <laughs> Walker says Quigley sustained a burn on his neck from his seatbelt. No one else was injured in the crash. Uh, Quigley now has been charged on suspicion of driving under the influence. What was the number, Johnny? Do we have a number? No number. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, this is the second time, though, he's been picked up for DUI in the last week. Oh, Grass that's Valley a bad sign. stopped him during a separate. So he doesn't incident. have a car, and he's going to go to jail. Huh? Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he also doesn't have a lighter, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or eyebrows. <laughs> or eyebrows, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the story for your good deed channel, Joe, when you get it started. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, this is exciting. <laughs> Another story. When a Florida man suffered a heart attack while laying sod in his front yard, the first responders that did... never s- happened to me. No. I, I might have a heart sod. attack, but it ain't going to be from laying <laughs> sod. You know, this <laughs> this strikes a little close to home. The summer before I had my operation, yeah. we resodded our entire front lawn. So after the operation, my wife said to me, you could have fallen over dead while we were John, sodding the lawn. Yeah, and there's people that will do that. What? Put the sod in. You yeah. just can well, sit well, out there and watch them, you know? It was sod it's, busters. Let's come up exercise. with a couple extra bucks, John. That's come on. Exercise. Get cheaper sod and people to put it in. <laughs> good exercise. <laughs> okay. uh, Melissa and Gene Work. Yeah, that'll damn near kill you, but it's good exercise. <laughs> well, who saved this guy? Melissa and Gene Work were rushing to finish the artwork in time to avoid a fine from their homeowners association. Melissa Work said the husband was so worried about meeting the deadline that while he was drifting in and out of consciousness on the way to the hospital, he begged her to keep the grass from dying. The rescue team at the time took notice. After leaving the couple at the hospital, seven firefighters went back to the house, finished putting the sod in. Melissa Work is sharing her thanks. Pasco County Fire and Rescue officials said on Facebook that they believe in helping the community wherever they're needed. My buddy clerking in Prior Lake, the summer, the my first summer up there, I got to know this guy, and he got us a job. Three days on the sod. Mm-hmm. Cutting laying sod? Side. I've never oh. forgiven him. Laying, you know, taking it off the truck and laying it out. Because you're... There's... And this is when they weren't tight, you know, when they didn't have the yeah, equipment yeah. to make them really tight. I lasted three days and never, never <laughs> forgave Pants all askew and ripped and like corners are coming out. And Where should I put this? <laughs> it's mangled. Go get another one. Uh, Trying to get it out of your pants was the worst part. You know, hey, the, yeah, right. After yeah, eating yeah. the brownies. Yeah, dirt everywhere. Yeah, they are messy. Mm-hmm. Huh. And officers who followed a car zigzagging down a Des Moines street before it crashed were surprised to find a 10-year-old boy at the wheel and his 7-year-old <laughs> brother riding shotgun. Way to go, kid. Happened this morning around 8.30, 911 caller alerting police to the reckless driver. Officers spotted the car, turned on their <laughs> flashing lights, but the curb-to-curb excursion didn't end until there was a small crash. Police say luckily neither boy was hurt. They're apparently just out for a ride in the car, according sure. to police. Weren't heading anywhere in particular. Sergeant Paul Parizek said they won't be referred to juvenile authorities, telling the Des Moines Register the punishment to fit the crime is probably going to be in their home. So how'd they get the keys? Do we know? Just Dad, Don't was, know. dad was sleeping? Dad was passed something? out in the back yeah. seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dad John, had all you, the brownies. John, you got to go be I, Kenny? I do, yeah. All right. Did Kenny retire? 
No, he's got another week of vacation, and then he's... Uh, he then won't he's, tell anybody where he is, oh, I bet. Heavens no. Somewhere west, though, right? <laughs> he went west, right? I think somewhere west. He went west of none of your business, Bill. <laughs> yes, but west of Alexandria. He's west of the ranch. He's out somewhere, but uh, he's I, almost Yosemite, I think. But I'm, he's he tweeted a couple of hints, didn't he? I thought I saw that. He tweeted. He, I saw a picture that he sent. Yeah, but I didn't know where it was because he wouldn't say where it was. <laughs> no, that's he loves to taunt like that. Yeah. Yes, he does. He's basically telling you I'm not at work. That's all. I he will cares say about. that uh, the Wednesday before I left here, he uh, told me how much I was going to hate the uh, train ride, and he was right about that. He said, "You don't drink, and the only thing to do on the train is to drink, mm-hmm. so you're going to hate it." And he was right. Hmm. What's coming up on the... Well, you got trains, caves, and zip lines over gator pods. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's three things I'll I'm not doing. I'll take the train ride just barely over the zip line. Yeah. The cave, guy could lose a little weight, you know? It'd be tough getting you out of there. Yeah, I know. We need some, we need some lube. We'd say, you know, we got some bad news. I was, bad thinking, I was thinking this could be the answer for Sano. <laughs> Trap him in a cave yeah. in Thailand for two weeks, and he'll get he'll get down to two thirty, and we'll be in. Good well, shape. if they get then, the then four, he'll be the superstar we all thought. It'll be become. if they get the four out in the coach. I think we will have witnessed a true miracle. We will, and uh, we're we're getting closer and closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's coming up? Well, Jerry Zagoda from the Star Tribune's out watching the summer league. Uh, one of the uh, the Timberwolves had a good night last night. We're going to talk about that. Ryan Lefevre covers the Kansas City Royals. Uh, one of their radio broadcasters, they've lost 27 out of 31. Uh, try to get an explanation for that. And have they then, stopped drawing down there, I wonder? Well, not like they were. They, I saw they had 28,000 yesterday for Boston. And uh, Wetmore will give us a report from Target Field uh, late in the show. So, And more on number two is back in the house? Uh, mm. He just left. He said he'll be back by about 530. Oh, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess Johnny Height has to perform in the role of Kenny this week. Yes, he's he did a bang up job yet last week, but there was no traffic last week. This week, we'll see if he's up to it. Fifteen hundred ESPN is KSTP St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's eighty six degrees. The ride with Royce is coming up next. Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. It's crazy to think that a few weeks ago we were talking about whether or not Tua Tagovailoa should consider retiring after two concussions and worldwide debates on player safety and NFL culpability. Tua has done nothing but go back to work and currently has the Dolphins riding a three game win streak and one loss behind the division favorite Buffalo Bills. While everyone was yapping about the end of his career, Tua Tagovailoa said he'll decide when it's time and clearly he's not ready to hang up the cleats. Hi, this is Chris Howard from the Plugged In with Chris Howard podcast. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting up to the minute scores for every sport. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the MLB playoffs, the start of the NHL season, MMA, boxing, and golf. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts.